Interpreting tornado graphs. Once the simulation has been started and executed, we are now ready to correctly reinterpret tornado graphs after the risk make input functions have been added. 70. Click again on the browse button to view the previously created tornado chart. The following chart appears. For tornado graphs showing a change in output statistic, such as this change in output mean, samples for an input are grouped into a set of equal sized bins, ranging from the input's lowest value to its highest. A value for a statistic of the output, such as its mean, is calculated for the output values in the iterations associated with each bin. By default, at risk uses 10 bins, each one containing 10% of the simulated iterations, that is 500 of the 5,000 iterations. The length of the bar showing for each input is distribution is based on the range of the highest statistic value for any bin to the lowest statistic value. The highest statistic value is plotted on one end of the bar and the lowest statistic value for any bin is plotted on the other end. These are double-sided tornado graphs where each bar ranges above and below the baseline or center of the graph. In other words, the interpretation is as follows. The most important variable is, according to this tornado, variable payroll. The relative importance of a variable is determined here by the range or difference between the two values of each bar. The larger the difference, the more important this input variable is on determining the range of possible values on the output cell, total profit. When the highest 10% of variable payroll iterations are considered, 500 sorted iterations, the mean total profit for this subset will be of $65,666. When the lowest 10% of variable payroll iterations are considered, 500 sorted iterations, the mean total profit for this subset will be of $147,586. This determines a range of close to $82,000. See that the definition of highest or lowest subsets comes from the label determining input high or input low. Intuitively, the higher the costs, the lower the profit and vice versa. The second most important input variable from the point of view of this tornado is number of contracts, since its range is of approximately $81,000. The third most important input variable from the point of view of this tornado is hours per contract, since its range is of approximately $69,000. Another way to see the relative importance of input variables upon total profit is by generating and analyzing the contribution to variance tornado. 71. On the tornado icon, click on the tornado contribution to variance option. This will generate the following tornado. For tornado graphs showing contribution to variance, the length of the bar shown for each input distribution is the amount of change in the output attributable to each input. These values are calculated during the regression analysis. The sequential contribution to variance technique calculates how much more of the variance in an output is explained by adding each of a sequence of inputs to the regression model. The selection of the variables and the order in which they are added is determined by the stepwise regression procedure. As with any regression technique, when input variables are correlated, the regression can pick any of the correlated variables and ascribe much of the variance to it and not inputs correlated with it. Thus, caution in interpreting the contribution to variance results is critical when inputs are correlated. In our case, variables are not correlated. Therefore, the interpretation of a tornado is clean and straightforward. Almost all of the variance of total profit can be ascribed to variable payroll. The second and third variables, hours per contract and number of contracts, add over one third of the total contribution to variance to total profit. Between these three top variables, 
Close to 84% of variants of total profit can be explained. 72. Now, with enough blank space beyond your tornado chart not stretched to its full screen extension, drag the, the top variable payroll bar out. At risk will create the following scatter plot with 5,000 data points on it. What this scatter plot clearly tells us is that the larger the variable payroll and iteration will contain, in most cases, the larger the total profit Joe will obtain. There is a clear, linear, and somehow strong relationship between the input variable payroll and total profit, as it has been calculated by the Pearson or linear correlation coefficient of 0.7015. 73. Now, go back to the previous tornado and try to drag the last bar out as we did before, this time with administrative and marketing expenses. This will generate the following scatter plot between administrative and marketing expenses as an input variable and total profit on the y-axis as the output variable. This indeterminate cloud of totally scattered points show a null relationship between administrative and marketing expenses and total profit, as shown by a linear or Pearson correlation coefficient of close to zero. In other words, Joe should forget about cutting these types of costs in order to enhance his profits, as opposed to better managing his additional resources to be hired on a variable payroll. This makes him think about either hiring an additional full-time employee or to fire one of his cousins and remain with only one additional worker.